All right, so we're going to look at an example here um, where we need to use one-sided limits to analyze the limits of this function. Uh, you'll find that quite frequently one-sided limits are necessary when you're dealing with piecewise defined functions, right? Um, for, for a lot of the functions that we typically encounter, like polynomials, trig functions, uh, this, this one-sided limit language is typically not necessary because we already know that you know, the regular limit, you know, the overall limit exists at every point for a polynomial, exists at every point for, let's say, sine x, right? And we know that if the overall limit exists, so do the one-sided limits, and we know that they have to have the same value, right? So if you already know about the overall limit, there's no point in considering the one-sided limits. We only really need to look at the one-sided limits if we can't tell what the overall limit is going to be or if it's going to exist, okay? Now, for a function like this, we can look at what's going on near x equal to 1, right? And we can see that jump in the value of the function at 1, right? Um, as we approach from the left, we're getting close to 1. As we approach from the right, we're getting close to 2. So intuitively know that the limit doesn't exist. Um, now with the language of one-sided limits, we can say exactly that, right? So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x, um, we can see it from the graph. One of the, I think, a good habit to get into here is replace f of x by the expression in the piecewise function that applies in this case. So we look at our piecewise defined function and we say, okay, x is approaching 1 from the left. That means we're looking at x values that are a little bit less than 1. Uh, which piece do I use if x is less than 1? We see it here. Okay, so it's the limit of x as x approaches 1 from the left. And once you've substituted in some expression like this, you evaluate the limit as usual. We know how to evaluate the limit of x. We direct substitution. We get 1, right? So the, the role of the the minus or the plus, the left-hand limit or the right-hand limit, right? the role that's played here is, is in telling us which piece of this piecewise function to choose. Once we've chosen it, this no longer really is relevant. It doesn't play a role anymore, right? The left and right-hand limits are the same for this function if we're approaching 1, okay? Same story here, okay? X is approaching 1 from the right. That means X is bigger than 1. Here's where X is bigger than 1 we need to use the expression 3 minus x. And so we get 3 minus 1, we get 2. So when we come down to part c, it says, what's the limit as x approaches 1? Well, we've just seen that the left and right hand limits are not equal. So we can simply say that this limit does not exist. Now, maybe, maybe you shouldn't just say does not exist, right? Let's, let's answer a little bit more fully, does not exist. Because the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit. Right. It's always a good idea to give some reason for your answer, right? Um, here, we're, here we're including that intermediate step to explain how we came up with the answer. Here we're giving a reason to explain where the answer came from, right? You shouldn't just fill in the blank. You should give some sort of reasoning for your answer. All right, finally, f of 1. Again, for a piecewise defined function, what you have to do, right? Remember that x, we're looking at x values, the inputs. Some people will get themselves mixed up with piecewise defined functions on inputs versus outputs, right? Um, we're not saying that y is between 0 and 1. We're saying that x is between 0 and 1. And, and f of 1, we're looking for what goes on when x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, we look for, we find it here. x equals 1, we use this expression, right? So f of 1 is just going to be, well, we replace x by 1. We get 1, right? So it's important to make sure that you look to see where that equal sign is when you're, when you're evaluating f of 1, right? So we can actually evaluate f of 1, right? Even though the limit doesn't exist, we can, the function is still defined at that point. All right. We could continue on from here. We could ask a number of other questions if we, if we were so inclined. I think we've probably seen enough for this example. Um, but if we wanted to ask some more, uh, we could ask about f of 0, right? f of 0 is defined because we, we have an x equals 0 condition here. We put 0 in, we get 0. Um, we could ask about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. 
And again, we would do the same sort of thing. If x is approaching 0 from the right, it's a bit bigger than 0. So we plug 0 into here. We get 0 for the limit. Um, this is another scenario where one-sided limits might come up even for well-behaved functions. If you have a restricted domain and you want to see what's going on at the endpoints of your domain, right? Uh, we can't actually ask about the overall limit as x approaches 0 um, because f is not even defined when x is less than 0, right? So all we can talk about at 0 is the right-hand limit. There is no left-hand limit because f is not defined um, when x is less than 0. Similarly, at 2, we can talk about the left-hand limit, but we can't talk about the right-hand limit, and we can't talk about the overall limit because f of x is defined when x is less than 2, but it's not defined when x is bigger than 2. Okay. Uh, we'll look at a few more examples to get a feel for this before we move on to the next topic.